Earlier this year, we had a first-hand look at the all-new Range Rover Velar at the Geneva Auto Show. Well, today, it's here, and we're going to take it for a test drive. First of all, I want to apologize because this Velar is kind of dirty. As you can see, it's a dead of winter right now and there's no car washers open and I'm not gonna make my driveway an ice rink by pulling out the hose either. So I apologize for that. So let's get to the exterior of the Velar. You know what, if Darth Vader was a vehicle, I think he'd be this Velar. Just look at it, especially this version. This is the Velar with our dynamic with the black package. Black, well, you can see for yourself everything is black. You get the black tinted windows. All the badges are blacked out. You have these black door handles that retract. It's like something right out of the Death Star. Then you have these beautiful 22 inch black wheels, the black grille. It just looks mean and sinister. The inside of the Velar is absolutely gorgeous. It's modern looking. It's got great looking and feeling materials throughout. So let's start with the steering wheel. This is a, uh, a metal rim steering wheel. Not a huge fan of these, especially when it's cold out. This is a heated steering wheel, by the way, but you still get that coldness around the outside of where your palms are. Uh, this does have a new capacitive touch switch system each side so it's kind of like two little remotes and you can configure it where you can actually program a button to do certain things if you tap it once or tap it twice or hold it longer it's kind of neat because when you use certain things they light up like if you're using the phone to hang up it actually lights up for the hang up button things like that so that's a nice thing now the one thing that i did notice though it's not as responsive or not as accurate as I'd like because in the center instrument panel, you have a configurable system and it's a great looking and working system. And you use it with the buttons or the capacitive buttons on the steering wheel. And I just found that not always when you're going forward or you're going backward or up or down, was it reacting properly. So I don't know, maybe that's something that could be handled in uh, programming or maybe you just kind of get used to it. In the center, the Touch Pro dual system. So dual screens. The one on the bottom is a fixed screen and it has two dials with it, which can actually uh, work in different modes. We'll get to that in a second. And the top one, it kind of flips out. It's kind of your main visual screen, even though it does work as a touch screen as well. So getting back to the bottom screen, when you're in climate control, for instance, that bottom wheel works for your climate control, but if you push it, it doubles as something else. And in this case, it doubles as the seat heat or cool. And on the other side, it's a fan. When you go into the vehicle, for instance, you can choose from your different drive selections with the left dial. And one thing I must admit, the graphics on this lower screen are phenomenal. They're beautiful graphics. I love the interface, looks great. These seats, as I mentioned, heated, cooled, but on the R Dynamic model we have here, they are massaged as well. So passenger and driver both get a massage. In the rear, decent room for a mid-size SUV. I had the car seats in there, no problem. The, the backs do recline. The whole seat does not move forward and back, which I would like. Further on in the cargo compartment, lots of room. Underneath the flap, you have a, a spare tire, but overall, a decent amount of room. The Velar comes in two engine configurations. First, a two liter turbo diesel engine. That's a four cylinder. It puts out 180 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque. The one we have here though is the three liter supercharged V6. Puts out 380 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque. Those are both matched to an eight speed automatic transmission. And one thing that I've noticed with this vehicle, uh, there is plenty of power, that's for sure, 380 horsepower, and there is plenty of torque, but I think it just lacks a little bit more of the grunt style torque. We're just kind of crawling around at 40K right now, and if I just step on it right now, 
there is a little bit of lag. There's a surge uh, when the power and the torque comes on. So I'd like to see a little bit more bottom end on this. Talk about the drive. I have it in comfort mode right now. We can go and switch our drive selector. And my favorite is dynamic. So dynamic adjusts everything. It makes it definitely a lot livelier, the engine parameters, the shifting, the, the transmission, of course, and uh, it really brings this vehicle alive. When you're driving the Velar, it really doesn't feel like you're driving a, an SUV. It, it feels like you're driving a, a premium um, performance wagon. That's what it really feels like, and it kind of has that look to it, sleek. One thing I have to mention, though, is I really haven't driven this vehicle a lot. First of all, um, it's winter time right now. It's minus two degrees out. There is some snow on the road, and this has those big 22 inch, uh, but they're all season tires. And, you know, to really push this any harder, it'd be better to do it with some proper winter tires. So I'm just kind of taking it easy. Plus, um, I've kind of been sick over the holidays here, so I haven't really gotten out in this vehicle a lot. I haven't taken on any long trips or anything, so mainly city driving uh, and very easy going city driving. And I got to tell you, though, the fuel economy is not very good, considering this is kind of like a mid-sized SUV uh, and we're averaging over 18 liters per 100K. So that's a little bit steep for this size of vehicle. Mind you, yes, this is a premium vehicle, but I'd like to see eh, maybe even a couple liters uh, off of that number would be quite nice. As I mentioned earlier, this Velar is the R Dynamic model, so it's really loaded up. It has a heated windshield, it has a heads up display, massaging seats that are rubbing my back right now, and a whole host of other driving aids. Now, the standard Velar comes with a lot of driving aids as well, like autonomous braking, adaptive radar cruise control, lane departure warning, and of course, a backup camera and parking sensors. Now, here's where I have a kind of a little issue. First of all, the backup camera. I, I really don't like the resolution. It's just not really clear. And it's not nothing to do with the screens. Like I said, the screens are gorgeous. The graphics are beautiful. But when you turn that camera on, especially if the conditions are kind of poor, maybe bad weather or it's dark out, and it does have front and rear parking sensors to help you park as those proximity sensors. But for this price of vehicle, I'm really surprised that it does not come with the round view, like the 360 camera system that so many other cars come with now. If you get the three liter supercharged Velar, it comes with the air suspension and that allows you to raise and lower the vehicle. Great for off-road situations. It also has an automatic access height feature where it can lower the vehicle by 40 millimeters, making it easier to get in and out of. Also with the air suspension, you get a higher wading height. Say you're gonna take this into some pretty deep water. And you also get 38 millimeters higher ground clearance than the conventional metal springs. Now we weren't able to really test any of those out, but if this vehicle is anything like any of the other Land Rover products, I'm sure it's gonna be more than capable enough uh, for off-road use. Like I said in Geneva, this is one stylish SUV. I really do think this is the best looking SUV that's come out this year. Now, one really good thing about this particular Velar is that it's equipped exactly like I would actually equip it if I were to buy it. The bad thing, it's equipped exactly the way that I would like it if I were to buy one. You see, the Velar starts at only $62,000 Canadian, which is not bad for a premium SUV. But if you add in a whole bunch of options like this one, that price could get up there really quick to close to about $100,000, which is a little bit too rich for my blood. But you know what? If you've got it, spend it. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.